One minute on my mark. Mark. Let's go for drop. Drop in one minute on my mark. Mark. Mark 60 seconds. Check 115. Now we're going to hold it again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Drop Mark in. Mark 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, two one, one, drop. Separation confirmed. Separation confirmed. CBR is recording. Ignition confirmed. CBR is recording. We have stable flight. Copy stable flight. Right, recording. Good job for dropping my script, so. <laughs> Mach 1. Vehicle's gaining altitude. Acceleration is good. Spin rate is good. Mach 2. Vehicle stable. Mach 3. Vehicle stable. Acceleration is good. Mach 4. We're not detected. Yeah. Yeah. VT1, good burnout. Detected VT1, 1,010 meters per second. Copy VT1. Expected VT2, 899 meters per second. Residual spin rate, 2 degrees per second. DT1 detected. Yeah! Yeah. Good. DT2 detected. on project net. RD, this is TC on project net. Yes, sir, I copied. I translated the partial shoot. Good copy. You had a partial shoot. RD, move over to Anomaly 1 and coordinate with trajectory on uh, movement of the ships. RD, this is trajectory on the Spongebob location. 22, 48, 29, decimal 0. 
Longitude, negative 160. Acceleration. 36. 55. Decimal zero. Avionics flight. Go ahead, flight. Uh, how much longer do you have for time shutdown? By 200 seconds. 200 seconds. RD also splashed down without anything else. Copy that, MD. TC, this is BPO. Go ahead, BPO. Yeah, TC, I got a best estimate on uh, balloon impact, lat and long. If you're ready to copy. Let's go ahead and move this over to TechNet. Roger, go TechNet. Uh, yes, sir, I got 22, 48, 29. Uh, sir, Two minutes to uh, time shut down sequence. TCOC. Go ahead, OC. All right, if you advise, we still have a track on the uh, balloon with our radar. Yeah, if we can go ahead and get you over on TechNet and provide the uh, uh, last known location. One minute at the time, shut down. Ten seconds of time shut down. DVR, stop recording. Copy DVR, stop recording. seconds to fur cable cut. Fur cable cut. That's good fur cable. Fur cable cut. That's good fur cable cut. Ordinance shut down. NMI for altitude trigger for altitude shutdown.
can see the LDSD test is complete and they are in the process of shutting things down just prior for the vehicle to enter the water as it drops down, shutting all the systems down so cameras and all data will be protected. 24. Dan, go ahead and ex explain to us what transpired through the test and how things went. Sure. So. Um, First off, uh, it looked like uh, our rockets fired correctly. Uh, looks like we got up uh, to the altitude and the speed we were looking for. Uh, we heard the call that we were in a stable flight. We heard that we got up to Mach 4. Uh, so looks like we got the condition that we wanted to. The Sci had inflated. And uh, of course, it's too early to say exactly how it performed, but it looks like it performed great. Uh, what we're seeing now on the screen now is that uh, we're getting down to, to uh, lower altitudes, and so the pressure is higher outside the side, and so that makes it flap around. But while we were actually using it uh, up at altitude, uh, it looked like it was performing very well. Uh, the parachute, though, uh, we heard that there was a, a partial shoot. Uh, so that tells us that the parachute deployed, uh, but there was something that happened with its operation uh, that wasn't expected. It was a little bit hard to see exactly what was happening in the, the sort of low resolution feed that we had. Uh, and so that's why the team is going to take a look at um, the, the high resolution video that we're going to get back along with the rest of our data to make a determination about what's going to happen. Um, and so one of, the, one of the next steps that's going to happen is we have a black box aboard, aboard the vehicle uh, which has all of that critical data. It's really a gold mine of important data from this test. Uh, that's going to separate off the vehicle. It has homing beacons on it so we can find it and fish it out of the water. And so that's really the top priority uh, once this splashes down is to get that black box out of the water because that's going to tell us exactly what happened with the parachute and everything else in the test. So we just saw that the systems have shut down in preparation of splashing down into the water. Um, this is a great example of understanding how we test and why we test. We have to push the envelope to the max to learn as much as we can. That's right. Uh, this, is, this is exactly why we do tests like this uh, before we send things to Mars, so that we can understand exactly how they work or don't work. Um, and then we can improve on our designs to make sure that when we're, we actu we're actually ready to send spacecraft to Mars, we know that they're going to work uh, when that big mission is on the line. Roger, I have uh, LOS on the radar. Uh, stand by for, uh, and a reminder, uh, this is the largest parachute ever tested. The parachute that went to Mars with MSL was the largest that we had at that point. And this is the largest supersonic parachute to get to the next level. That's right. It's about uh, twice the area of the parachute that was used with Curiosity, uh, about 100 feet in diameter. So it really is a, a very, very large parachute uh, that we're testing, uh, that we have tested here today. And we will have more information as, as things um, transpire. Uh, there will be a news conference planned tomorrow, I believe, at 7 a.m. Uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. That's when uh, Mark Adler, the project manager, and Ian Clark, the PI on LDSD, will be able to give us a little bit more information. Um, but right now, we basically have what we could see. And Good copy. Let's um, help people understand what will happen. What it goes on with the recovery. have cameras that are uh, stationed to, to actually witness the splashdown event. Uh, so we're not going to be able to yeah, see that. But we do have boats that are uh, going to the, the site where we're projecting the vehicle. Water. And then um, here's another view uh, of the parachute being hoisted already been recovered. So that's uh, that's really the next step for the team this year. Those are the pictures from last year. And uh, those same things are going to happen here. Uh, it was the second LDSD test, but there are three planned and there is still 
yet another one that will take place a year from now in the same location in Kauai, Hawaii. Um, it's anybody's guess at this point exactly what will be tested, but there is a possibility that we may try testing a brand new SIAD. We've already seen SIAD R working well in two cases. Two, two tests already. Uh, is there a possibility of a, a new SIAD? We may try testing a brand new SIAD. We've already seen SIAD R working well in two cases. Two, two tests already. Uh, is there a possibility of a, a new SIAD? There is a possibility, yeah. We have a, uh, a, a totally new design of SIAD that uh, we've been working on in parallel with the SIAD that we've seen here today. Um, and so there's a possibility that we'll test that SIAD next year. It's going to depend a lot on uh, the analysis of what happened here in the test today. So the team is going to spend some time with the data, understanding uh, what happened, looking at the video, looking at all of the instrumentation data, and coming to some, you know firm conclusions about how everything performed. Um, and that is going to inform the choices about what we're going to do in our supersonic test next summer. All right, so we have some video of that SIAD E. We might be able to roll it. This is part of the work that you've been working on with the LDSD project. Yeah, that's right. So uh, this is another rocket sled test. Uh, this is the SIAD E. It's a larger version of the SIAD. The design is. Uh, this is another rocket sled test. Uh, this is the SIAD E. It's a larger version of the SIAD. The design is somewhat different. So here's a, a slow motion view of the SIAD deploying. Uh, it actually has inlets uh, that are open to the air. You can see them well in this view here. Um, and so then the SIAD that we tested here today, which is which is a sort of a pressure vessel, a donut. Um, so here's different views of that SIAD uh, deploying in slow motion. It actually only took about a, one second uh, to deploy here on the rocket sled. And we tested it uh, at about 220 miles per hour. So it was, it was traveling pretty quickly down that track, again, uh, to make sure that it's strong enough to withstand the forces that it would see uh, in a supersonic test. So that wraps up the main order of business for today. The test, the vehicles, cameras have stopped, and uh, they will uh, be off until the um, the vehicle hits the water. It was to be shut off. All power is off until the test vehicle hits the water, and boats are on standby to retrieve the the vehicle, and they won't be back to shore until sometime tomorrow. And there will also be a telecon tomorrow to report and follow up on what happened. That will be at 7 a.m. Hawaii time, 10 a.m. Pacific, and 1 p.m. Eastern. And, and to find out more information on LDSD, go to www.nasa.gov slash LDSD. All right, and we are going to sign off soon. Our thanks to Dan Coda, our awesome LDSD commentator, and the whole LDSD team that includes partners from three NASA centers, JPL, Marshall, and Wallops. And of course, a big thank you to the U.S. Navy Pacific Missile Range Facility. And we leave you now with a video on Syed e which very well may be one of the next technologies that could be tested on the next LDSD project. This is a video produced by Dan Coda of this year's Syed e sled test. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And if, again, you want more information, check that website. Thanks for joining us.
Hi, I'm Neil. Guys, finally do that.